Hey guys, how you doing? I want to jump into the scripture today. We're going to be in 2 Corinthians chapter 4. Let me just give you some awesome nuggets of revelation, uh, hope, and encouragement from the scriptures here. Uh, I always think it's good when the scriptures come alive. You know, I say this all the time. When the scriptures come alive to us and when we find our own story inside of scripture, when we find it, when there is that parallel, when there's that link, uh, we, we are able to draw hope and encouragement. And what we're really finding is the heart of Jesus in the scriptures to give us strength and, and to really equip and strengthen our faith to walk through what we're going through and to not give up. Yeah, I'm always hearing the, the voice of Paul saying, don't grow weary in well-doing, for in due time, you'll receive the reward. You'll receive the inheritance that's been promised to you. The only way you miss out on your destiny, the only way you miss out on all that God has for you is you simply give up. You quit. You stop in the middle of the journey, and we're not going to do that. And I believe, uh, just like today's message is called that Today's crushing is tomorrow's oil. We've got to remember that what we're walking through is not working against us, but it's working for us. Let's start in 2 Corinthians 4, verse 10. Paul says, we always carry around in our body the death of Jesus so that the life of Jesus might be revealed in our body. For we who are alive are always given over or consigned to death for Jesus' sake, so that, watch this, the life of Jesus may also be revealed in our mortal body. So then, death is at work in us, but life is at work in you. Paul was giving them insight into fellowship with Jesus. Listen, the the more we walk with the Lord, the more He's asking us to surrender things to him, to surrender our will, our ideas, and even our preferences over to him. And the way in which he asks for them is many times by the circumstances and the people around us. God uses the church to sharpen us. He uses our job, our bosses, our careers, our, our, our success or lack thereof, all of these circumstances God is using to reveal things in us. But what, what Paul is saying is this. He's saying, we carry about the death of Jesus in our body. What does that mean? Jesus said, if you want to follow me, then you have to pick up your cross and come after me. The, the, the way of following Jesus, there is a sense that we're giving our lives up for him. But Paul is also clear when he says in the scriptures, he said to the Philippians, everything that was to gain for me, I now count as lost to the comparison of knowing Jesus. The, the knowledge of God is not just knowing more of the Bible, it's knowing him more intimately. It's knowing Jesus personally and intimately. And as we know him, we do what Paul says when he said, I've, I've known him in the fellowship of his sufferings. That means fellowship, the friendship, the common union of we, we find Jesus in our suffering. So what Paul is saying is we are carrying about dying. We're dying to ourselves, but death is at work in us, but life is at work in you. In other words, what was painful for Paul became joy to others that he ministered to. So what he had to die to actually release life to others. I find this in my own life and even in a recent season, I found that, you know, I was in a place or God had delivered me and my wife into a place that we never would have chosen for ourselves. And we're looking around going, God, what are you doing? This feels like death to us. But as we talk to the people around us and in our lives, the ones we minister to, the ones that are our friends or the ones that we're, we're around, we've been called to, so forth, they're all full of life. And we're going, we feel like we're dying, but everything around us is growing. This is the life of Jesus, is that his suffering, it, it, it almost purchases our grace. His suffering, his dying, the Lord's death became our life. And in the same way, we walk this out for others because we embrace the dying of the Lord Jesus. We embrace when God brings us into a place and we go, 
I'm dying here. Can't you see? My will is dying. My, my gifts may be dying. Uh, I'm dying to something, but in the dying, there's actually life. See, in the crushing, there's actually life that's being released. You, you, you think of the olive. The olive has to be crushed for the oil to come out. The flower has to be ground up for the fragrance to be released. The wine does not come out of the grape unless the grape is crushed in the wine press. And that is where many of us find ourselves. We find ourselves dying, going, Lord, this is, this is not fun. And the Bible says this in Hebrews. It says that, you know, discipline for the moment is never joyful, but sorrowful. You know, when we find ourselves sorrowful, we're like, man, I've missed the boat somewhere. What is going on? Is there any purpose to this? But we find strength. We find endurance to run the race God has set before us when we're able to find purpose in our pain, when we find purpose in that place of suffering. Paul was saying here to the Corinthians, look, we live a lifestyle of dying to ourselves, but it's not about us because even though death is at work in us, life is at work in you. We carry about the dying of the Lord. We, we walk in suffering knowing that it's producing something for us. Let's move on. Paul goes on to say later in 2 Corinthians 4, 16, he says, therefore, we don't lose heart because though our outer self is wasting away, yet our inner self is being renewed day by day. You see that? When your flesh... Sometimes even when the outside stuff starts falling apart, starts wasting away, starts decaying, the inner self is renewed day by day. When you die to yourself, when you die to the outward stuff, the inward life comes alive. You can always tell, and listen when I say this, you can always tell a person who is more concerned with building the inner garden of their heart, the inner garden of their intimacy with the Lord than they are with building outward things when they are not led astray or distracted by outward things, good or bad. We have to understand the more we fall in love with that secret place of abiding with the Lord, following the Spirit, and, and this does not just mean the secret place. I know that a lot of us, and I've even taught this, that oil comes comes from the secret place, right? Like the oil of the Lord, the oil of intimacy that lights our lamps. It comes from prayer and worship, and it does, but that's not the only place it comes through. Really, oil comes through crushing. It comes through surrender. So whether we're surrendering in prayer, surrendering in worship, or whether we're surrendering our daily lives by just being obedient where God has put us, any time we embrace and receive everything as from the hand of the Father, we know that it never ends with just suffering, with just death. It always ends with resurrection when it comes to God. It always ends with glory. See, the most glorious act, the most glorious act of ministry of all time, of all human creation, of all the cosmos, um, of, of all of human history was Jesus Christ on the cross, crucified, naked, giving his life, being obedient even to the point of of suffering the death of the cross. But in that death was actually glory. Glory was released to all of mankind because of his suffering. And in the same way, when you are obedient and you then go through hard things or suffering or crushing or pressing or stretching, what you're actually doing is being obedient to the point of death. And in the same way that the cross releases grace to, to all humankind, when you move in that obedient place, in that crushing place, and you receive it, though you feel crushed, life is being released around you. The flower feels crushed, but the fragrance is beautiful. The, 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 everyone loves the oil, but ask the olive how much the oil cost. The oil costs everything. So you don't just get oil from your secret place. You get oil from secret place living, which means not just visiting a secret place to pray, though we need that, that's foundational, but we're talking about the traveling chair, the traveling secret place. I'm going deep on you guys now. We're pulling out Song of Solomon, the traveling secret place where 
My, my intimacy with the Spirit is not resigned to a time or place alone. It's, it's every part of my life. So as I obey Him, I can, I can embrace the crushing because I know it has a purpose. And the purpose isn't just for my life, but for others' lives. That's the secret. That's the secret of the kingdom. We're all missing in, in a celebrity Christian culture where everybody wants to be seen. Here's the secret. It's not about you. It's about your obedience releasing something for other people. That's why you bear fruit. You don't bear fruit for yourself. What is fruit for? Fruit is, is to be eaten. Fruit is to be consumed, to give energy, strength, life to others. Your fruit is not for you to show off and be a big, bountiful fruit tree. Your fruit is so others can eat from your life. The oil of the Holy Spirit, the nearness of intimacy with Jesus on your life, that oil is not for you to just only shine bright so that people can be drawn to you. The oil is that you might shine bright so those people may be drawn to Jesus. Because remember, with your gift, people will be drawn to you. But with the anointing, with the oil of the Holy Spirit on your life, people are drawn to Jesus. And People that have walked through crushing will tell you that on the other side, they needed the oil that the crushing gave them for where they were going. Oh man, that is big. Paul goes on to say, for this light and momentary affliction is producing for us an eternal weight of glory that is far beyond comparison. Did you see that? That, that is good. He says, the light... This is the description of your affliction, according to Paul. By the way, and this was a guy who called sitting in chains in prison, beaten, almost killed, chased out of cities, you know, shipwrecked, hungry. The list goes on. He says these are light afflictions. Not you lost your charger, you know, not that like they messed up your Uber Eats order, not that DoorDash jacked your order up. That's, that is not, that's not momentary light affliction. Paul went through it and he says, our light and momentary affliction. So it doesn't, it doesn't add up. It's not a weighty thing when compared to the glory that it's producing. I love he uses those words. Our light and momentary affliction is working for us. You see, discipline, crushing, those things are not working against you. They're not trying to break you down. God didn't set you up to fail. He gave you what you needed to pass this test, to go through the crushing. And though there's mystery, and though there is there's sometimes confusion and going, God, where are you? I'm telling you, the crushing, Paul says, is producing something for you. And here's what it is producing eternal glory, light, momentary affliction, weighty, eternal glory. You do the math. What was a light affliction might have felt heavy in the moment. Looking back, when you see the glory it produced on your life, the authority it gave your life, you'll say, that was a light affliction for what it gave me. Then he says this, it's momentary. Whatever your affliction is, discipline is, crushing is, it's not forever, it's momentary, but what you get from the momentary affliction is eternal glory. That means you paid a, a finite price for an infinite reward. That's how good God is. He says, I'm going to allow you to go through a momentary thing. And he knows how heavy it is. He, he walks, you know, he carries it with us. But he says, this is light and momentary compared to the eternal weight of glory I'm giving you because you're going to carry this weight of glory that you gained through the crushing. You're going to carry that, that, that glorious oil of my spirit on your life forever. And you paid a fine finite price for it. Man, God is so good. And then he ends the scripture in uh, 2 Corinthians 4 by saying this, so we fix our eyes not on what is seen, but what is unseen. He's saying, look, what's happening in the natural, what our eyes see, that's not the, the, the end of the truth. We don't deny that what we see is real, but we, we acknowledge there is a greater, higher truth above it. He says, we don't put our eyes on what's happening. We put our eyes in the invisible realm, in the spiritual realm. What is God doing in this crushing? What's God trying to get out of me? What is God trying to, the good and the bad? What is he cleansing? What's he purifying? What's he doing? What is, what, what is God trying to get me to hear, to see, 
the quicker we can get to the place of saying, Lord, I surrender. And I just want to hear your voice. I want to grow. I want to know what you're doing. Listen, the sooner we submit and surrender, the sooner the affliction seems to come to an end and the sooner we see the glory come. But Paul says, for what is seen is temporary, but what is unseen is eternal. Nobody will ever truly know the crushing that each of us go through. Our, our, our stories are all completely unique. But inside of those unique stories, there are principles that are the same for us all. And it's true that often what we see, it's all temporary. It's fading away, the good and the bad. It's all temporary. What is unseen, the invisible realm, what God is doing inside of us, the unseen place, the spiritual place where God abides, that is eternal. We're gaining eternal reward for these momentary crushings. I'm telling you, today's crushing is giving you the oil for tomorrow that you need. This thing you're going through is preparing you. And God is preparing many of you in this hour like uh, an Olympic runner or an Olympic gymnast. He's saying, you've got to cut this out. You've got to start doing this. I want you to... He's taking you places and going, you're going... I feel like I am totally out of my element. He goes, I know. I've brought you to a place where you couldn't use your strengths, where you had to embrace your weakness so that I could be proved strong in your life and the glory would go to me, not to you. Man, I hope this teaching blessed you guys. I want you to know I love you. I love what God is doing uh, in the earth right now. And I'm so excited to bring these teachings. If this has blessed you, send it to someone, man. Encourage them. Um, like, subscribe, do all the good stuff. Check out our online mentorship community. We got music coming out. Our new album is almost finished. I cannot wait for you guys to hear this record. It's amazing. It's special. There is something on this new record Danielle and I are about to drop. So I love you, and I'll see you around.